All right, what's going on everybody? It's Sam from Zrother Meme Bet. In this video, we're doing my wrap up of all the picks, the bets for UFC 270 uh, and Gano versus Gun. This will be the, the discussion on the prelims, guys, the breakdowns, plus the lock of the night and top two probably discussion and the pro bets. So let's get right into it. If you if you're seeing this from Patreon, thank you very much for your support, guys. That's because of you guys we keep this channel running. If you're not part of my Patreon, feel free to stick until the end. I'll show you how. You can join the Patreon. If you're seeing this from YouTube, probably you see this video released after the event. It was recorded before the event, but released after in respect to my patrons. In case you want to hear uh, for the future cards, the, the prelims and the pro bets and lock of the night discussion, feel free to jump to the Patreon again, all right? So there's nothing new uh, from the video I, I recorded in the main card. I covered this already, but just real quick, between him gun and gun, I'm picking gun and betting him, my biggest bet of the card. I'm picking Greg Hardy against Olenek. I'm picking and betting Figueiredo against Moreno. I'm picking and betting Potelio versus, versus Skin. I'm picking it gravely, but betting Simon de Oliveira. I'm picking Ken Hansen, but not betting. Rodolfo Vieira and Wellington Turman. I'm picking Vieira and betting Turman. Said Nurmagomedov versus Cody Stamen. I'm picking Nurmagomedov, not betting. Matt Frivola, General Valdez. I'm picking Frivola, but betting Valdez. Michael Morales versus Trevin Charles. I'm picking Morales and not betting. Yara Tapuria versus Mozar Evloev. Picking betting Tapuria. The main card breakdowns I have covered already. And uh, the prelims I'm going to be covering here in this video. But before starting, let's discuss the... The bets, I think this is probably what most of the people are interested in too. So as always, I like to put at least two options in discussion here, guys. I'm going a little bit heavy on Sirio Gun in both of them, just a little bit different styles. In the first one, I'm putting a little bit, uh, you know, money on a gun, you know, like in, a, in a straight bet, in a single bet, right? Because uh, to me, gun is at least 60% favorite, guys. There is the power and whatnot, you know. I, I'm sure that people are betting and picking and gun there with a the knockout and etc. Feel free to hear my breakdown, but to me there is value on gun. You know, this is his fight to win, you know. So I think he's gonna win that and I think there's good value in that. So pretty pretty you know, between one, with one hundred dollars I'm going quite heavy on gun. Also gun and uh, and gun over one and a half. This is excellent guys. I don't think uh, and gun gonna come crazy like guns blazing and uh, you know, trying to take his head out from the from the start. I think Gun gonna sorry, and Gun France and Gun gonna gonna fight a, a uh, you know at least gonna try to pace himself. This is pretty much a lock in my opinion, and also very good bet. You know, a prop bet here and Gun and uh, Gane over one and a half at minus one sixty, massive value. You know, my pick for the fight is Gun by decision plus three hundred, massive value as well. Even if you like a more you know uh, conservative approach, I would say that you have to put some money on gun by decision. You know, Raoni Barcelos, guys, this guy should win the fight. Actually, I, I even think I don't have here in my slides to break down this to you guys. I have, uh, I can put a link in the description. I think there's a, uh, I broke this down in a previous card where uh, they were supposed to fight the first time. And uh, pretty much, you know, Barcelos should win against Victor Henry. Henry is a tough guy, you know, well-rounded, experienced. But Barcelos should win unless uh, Henry finds a clean shot and, uh, you know, Barcelos gets you know, uh, confused in there, disoriented. And I would say that Henry has some chances, but I don't see much of a chance for Henry. So it's pretty much quite safe, but uh, the odds are the, the price is there. Minus 300 is quite a, a big price to pay, but still, I'm putting here as I think in uh, in in uh, you know in brackets some uh, more you know safer here safer option right and the option number two a little bit more aggressive I still think there is massive value on this one Gane and then Gane over one and a half you have to take this one in my opinion Gane by decision I'm going heavy here on the second option because there is a massive value here you know and Simon Oliveira I think this guy is a uh, is a live dog. Gennaro Valdez a little bit of a long shot, you know, this guy goes a little bit crazy in there. He can get taken down and dominated by Frivola, but still, it's not easy to fight this guy. I think there is value on him at plus 200, but not the same value as, as on Simon Oliveira. So this is a little bit more aggressive. And uh, in the option number one, if everybody cash, you get 80 out of 100, which is massive. It's excellent. And if Barcelos loses here, you know, you would still end up with 20, which is okay. Right, but on the option number two, 
if uh, if Ghana wins by decision, the the profit is massive alone. You know, even if the other two uh, uh, fail and, and miss, right? But even uh, if for some reason you, you know uh, Ghana loses, you know, I think this one still would cash, and uh, it would protect a little bit your bets with this just with these other two guys mixing it up a little bit. But still, it's more an approach where you you in uh, in brackets there you're putting a little bit more risk, you know. Nonetheless, this is uh, what I want to show you guys, but still, this is the way I do it things, you know, I like to mix it up a lot, as you guys know, but I think the best bets for this card are, are this, this here, in my opinion, you know, given the, the returns and then risk and return, this would be the best, all right? So the prop bets, guys, before we, we jump into the, um, into the breakdowns, so these are the props that, I, that I'm taking, actually, let me filter out of this uh, only UFC 27. By the way, guys, if you want access to this spreadsheet, know everything I'm doing this is part of the $50 tier, sticking to the end of the tier. How For now, this is the best uh, props that I have, guys. Actually, I, I have yet to go through all of them. I can put some extra there in the comments. So there is massive value on the fighting going the distance between in gun and gun. You know, there is... You can even bet go the distance, guy. I think, it, guys, it's a good bet because it's not impossible that in gun wins this by decision. Like I told you in the breakdowns, I even would say like I'm gonna split decision may sound crazy to to some of you, but could be fairly close and gonna hitting a little bit harder. You know, judges give to Engano because he's a current champion. You know, it's a little bit of a, a long shot there, but plus two thousand at least something is worse than my decision, in my opinion. But like I told you guys, to me the best bet here by far gonna by decision. Okay, and uh, yeah, so just to yeah, in the end of the, the video, we can show you guys how it looks like the Patreon $50 tiers ba tier. Basically, we guys have uh, access to everything here. Okay, so let me, let's go to the break breakdown real quick. This is a pretty big card, so let me try to make this concise and nice. Some of these fights have been canceled as well. So let's get uh, into the prelims breakdown, breakdown between Gion Kim versus uh, Juliana Botelho. This is an interesting one right off the bat. None of these girls, you know, are you know in the, in the top of the division. They have different styles, you know. Even though they both have massive potential because they are both very big for the for the weight class. Jim Young Kim has a massive reach, you know. This girl hits fairly hard. She's a good boxer. Her problem is that she, you know, for some reason she holds back. Looks like you know. I'd, I'd like to see Jim Young Kim. You know, taking the front foot more often, you know, using her size, her clinch game. She's not a good grappler, you know, she's not a wrestler, but in the clinch she's not bad, you know, she can defend some takedowns, even she can shoot, you know, it's not much her style, but I would like to see her using her size against opponents. We saw, like, against Alexa Grasso, she hold back a little bit, you know, Grasso was able to land a little bit cleaner. Kim is also favors to brawl a little bit more than to use techniques, so she has to, you know, use a little bit better her range too. Botelho is another very big girl for the division. You know, she used it to fight as a strawweight, but it was just crazy. She's very powerful, you know, you see her, she, the way she, she she hits, you know, her opponents. Even some uh, some videos in the gym, this girl also carries lots of weight, so she's legitimately, legitimately very strong. You know, she's also very well-rounded. She has a, a decent uh, wrestling game, you know. She hits hard, like I said, good leg kicks, good overhands. None of them, uh, most the most experienced, especially Botelho, who you know I think she started practicing MMA when she was 24, but she has so much uh, you know physical and uh, athletic potential that she's still a good, she's a, already a good fighter, right? So we'll see what's gonna happen here, guys. I think Botelho gonna somehow pace herself. She has to because she tends to win the first round and then she fades or to, along the fight to slip. I think that's why people actually, uh, the book is right, I fear very Jim Young Kim, probably they think that Botelho could guess, you know. I actually think that's possible, but I still think that Botelho has a little bit more chance to win this. I think she she uses a little bit better her wrestling game with the kicking game, you know. She also hits hard and Kim is more of a brawler. She gets hit quite a bit. So to me, Botelho would be the small favorite. To me, the, the odds are reversed in there. That's why to me it makes sense to bet Botelho. Nothing crazy, because uh, again, Botelho can guess, and uh, Kim takes over the fight. But uh, Botelho, especially Botelho by decision, to me makes sense, and Kim by decision also. Botelho is super tough, Kim is super tough, so I think they go the distance. 
even though they both hit hard just because they are again big and strong and tough all right so maybe fight go the distance actually would be probably the best bet here but i think this would be uh, too expensive so you have to pick one side i would pick potato in, in this case jacob Macon versus aj dobson this has actually moved to a future card i'm gonna move in there Tony Gravely versus Simon Oliveira, another interesting fight. Gravely, a very strong wrestler, not bad grappler from top, good ground and pound. Also on the feet, this guy does pretty well. He moves the head nicely, you know, puts some pressure on guys. Uh, quite, uh, you know, sharp combination. He's also fairly athletic, you know. He's quite short, and you're not the biggest guy for the division, but he's not too small. Bent to weight, you know, has some power, like I said. He's fighting Simon Oliveira, newcomer. Simon, you know, this guy's more of a, a brawler, you know, like he, he comes forward like uh, aggressively. He likes a lot to use flying knees and, and this type of things, you know. Uh, he has good, a good guillotine. I think he, I, I'm not sure what kind of uh, credential he has in the BJJ. If I'm not mistaken, he's probably a brown belt, you know. But uh, this guy's very tough, you know. He's this Brazilians that, you know, come for war. Tony Gravely is a very strong fighter, you know, in the first round. He tends to slow down just a little bit, you know, from the second. I think somehow Oliveira resembles, uh, what's the name of the guy again? Uh, Nathan Manez, right? Not ve not exactly, of course, Manez is more uh, composed in there, you know, has more strategy behind. You, Oliveira is more of a brawler. You know, but still, this guy has a, a similar size, similar reach as uh, Manes, and uh, definitely tough as, as Manes. Oliveira gets hit more often, so you can uh, see gravely, you know, landing clean and maybe even putting Oliveira out from strikes from the ground. But guys, I, I'm back and forth there, to be honest. I almost picked Oliveira. I still think gravely has more chances to end this fight. But in terms of a bet, it's definitely dog or pass here, in my opinion, you know. Gravely, by my calculations, minus 140, you know. But uh, there, there's all, of course, there's a margin for error in, in these things, you know. But um, I don't know, man. Simon Oliveira plus 200, definitely. Or a stab, I'm betting him, you know. Let's see what's going to happen. I can definitely see him surviving the first and uh, putting on pressure on Gravely, start landing something clean, even on some flying knee. You know, Gravely is quite susceptible to that because he's a little bit shorter, you know than a, than a normal bento weight or at least he's significantly shorter than Oliveira so we'll see guys we'll see what's gonna happen actually Oliveira is not that tough I'm not mistaken he's probably 5'5 five five, but that, that sounds weird to me some videos I saw him he looked pretty tall like 5'8 or something but still I think Oliveira has uh, has definitely more chances for the knockout here you know and gravely of course he can land something clean put him out or finish him on the ground with the chokes and uh Round and pound, but I see Oliveira, you know, coming for war and having some chances there, right? Rowney Barcelos versus Victor Henry. Actually, I have it here. I thought that I didn't. Yeah, I mean, I, I told you a little bit on the breakdown there. Uh, I think Barcelos has more chances to win, to win this fight. He's way more aggressive. He likes to take the front foot. Has a very good uh, flow with the strikes, with the with the straight shots, the leg kicks, and, it, and he takes it to the ground. Henry, very, you know, experienced guy, tough, you know, can do a little bit of everything. But there is a different level, especially on the ground. Henry could manage the distance here, picking some shots against Barcelos, but I don't think there is much chance for that just because Barcelos has a, a good head movement and he uses the leg kicks and mix it up well. So Henry has to be worried with the takedowns, right? And uh, Henry is also coming uh, as a newcomer here, which is always a factor, even though he's not that young, so he's probably going to be composed in there. But uh, still, I think this is Barcelos' fight to win. I think the lines are a little bit off. I would have Barcelos like minus 200. By this logic, it would make sense to bet Henry, but I'm not gonna uh, not gonna do that. Plus, I said in the in the discussion there that only Barcelos could be potentially a lock here, you know. Because I haven't seen any flaws, be basically from uh, from Barcelos. You know, the guy just performed all, every single time. He performed well. The last fight that he lost against the other guy there, which I called that fight, I said the uh, the Russian guy there, Timur Valiev, had the, the had more chances. It, I thought Valiev would be able to you know keep it standing. Actually, it was an interesting fight. You know, I was I was back and forth. I actually thought that Barcelos won that fight, but luckily. Uh, the, the judges gave to Timur Valiev, so I, I got a bet. 
but still I think Marcelo Marcelo has very little flaws to his game, you know, unless Henry it's lands something clean and uh, we see Marcelo's chance tested. I don't think it's gonna be a problem, but still that's the only chance I see for Henry like landing something clean and, and Marcelo somehow getting you know gun shy there type of thing. Right? Unless I think Marcelo's quite a strong pick, but I'm not betting him uh, myself here, okay? Okay, Hansen versus Jasmine Jesu the Vicious. This is a this is a fairly easy fight to break down. Jasmine, pretty decent wrestler on the offensive part, on this on the striking. She's more of a brawler, not much structure to her game, but she's very big and tough. You know, she's fighting Kane, Kane Hansen, which is quite short for a strawweight, and they're fighting the flyweight here. But I saw some uh, some pictures on on Hansen. She looks pretty, you know, fit in there. You know, looks like a very uh, uh, thick, thick and, and muscular, you know, as a flyweight. I think Kane Hansen probably just because she's young, you know, 21, and her body's probably. Uh, developing still, she's probably gonna gonna be even the stronger girl here, despite the size uh, discrepancy. Kay Hansen likes to wrestle. Jasmine Josevicius doesn't like to defend things. She doesn't have good defense overall. Uh, neither on the feet, neither on the ground. I think Kay Hansen gonna take her down and uh, probably dominate from them from there. To me, uh, Hansen is quite a strong favorite. Actually, calculate this wrong. She's pro she's like minus two hundred. Jasmine would be plus 180. The, the odds are pretty close to that, so the bookies have uh, Hansen probably minus 250. If you're gonna force me to bet, I think I would still probably bet Hansen. I think uh, she has way more chance to dominate, you know. But as of now, I'm gonna pass, I'm gonna watch. Let's see uh, how Hansen fares in the flyweight. Probably it would be worse to just throw Hansen in some parlays, you know. But uh, uh, rather than that, not much money, you know, on, on Hansen. I think there's still some questions here to be answered. Matt Frivola versus General Valdez. I told you guys, Valdez, you know, this guy's super aggressive, you know, like he comes right off the bat swinging and shooting and, uh, you know, scrambling. You know, this guy just doesn't care. You know, he pushes until he, he either breaks his opponent or he, he breaks himself. He's, not, he's never lost. So, so far, he was able to break down, break his opponents. Trevola, a guy known by his cardio and his toughness, you know, he got f a, f uh, a, f a fast uh, knockout loss in his last fight. I don't think Valdez has that much power. I uh, um, forgot the name of the guy now. It's uh, Terence McKinney. But uh, Valdez is going to try. He's going to push. He's going to make Trevola fight. Trevola doesn't back down from a brawl. I think Trevola, Igor going to be tested here. I don't think, he's, again, this guy's a fighter. He's not going to back down. He's going to scramble. He's going to go for a war against Valdez. That's why I think uh, Valdez has chances. To me, Valdez is a live dog here, guys. Frivola, if he keeps himself calm and he uses a, a wrestling-based approach in this fight, he's probably gonna dominate because I don't think Valdez, at least from what I've seen, I don't like much him from his back. He kind of, you know, uses too much energy there. If uh, Frivola can, can manage, hold him down, make this him guess and then take over the fight, he's a strong favorite. But again, to me, it's going to be a war here. And if it's a war, definitely Valdero has chance. General Valdez has chance. And uh, Valdez is a big guy for a flyweight, um, for a um, lightweight. You know, this guy is like long, you know, powerful. I think he's more powerful than, uh, than Frivola. I think Frivola has the better cardio, you know. But it's tough to tell because General, you know, this guy goes so crazy every single fight that, uh, you know, if you don't match his intensity also, you're probably gonna lose. So we're gonna see what's gonna happen. Very chaotic here. The under props probably uh, would be interesting, but that should come very expensive. I actually have a, have a, I have not put that here, you know. Uh, Frivola by decision or either guy inside the, inside of the distance, I would say that uh, it's pretty much the same chances. This is not likely to go the distance, despite my my call here on on Frivola by decision. I just think that it's pretty much the same odds for Frivola by decision and Frivola inside of the distance. And I think that there is some chance that Frivola gonna fight smart. That's why I'm picking him by decision. But this is again a very uh, chaotic fight, and I'm actually betting uh, about this. Yeah, just thinking that there is a chance there, right? Said Norma Gomedo versus Cody Stamen. Probably this is the last one 
Let me see one more to break down. So this is a this is an interesting one actually. Said should win this fight here, guys, because he has the range. You know, what I don't like about much about Said Nurmagomedov is that he spins too much. You know, spins too much. He doesn't uh, use too many straight shots. He kind of doesn't uh, doesn't use his 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 height and reach potential. It would be very smart to use against Colby Stamen, who is an okay striker, you know, can do a little bit of everything, not bad leg kicks, good overhand, good uh, good hooks in there. But uh, everybody knows Stamen, he's a wrestler, a strong one, you know, he, he likes to push guys against the cage or just out-wrestle them from the, from the open mat. He's also a good grappler from top, you know, tough to, to get him out of you. I think Sorb Seidner Magomedov has enough skills to stop those takedowns and uh, he has a different wrestling style which is more like a Russian style based which I think is going to be quite tough for Stamen. Wrestling wise you can pick your side, you know, I would say that Said has a little bit more chance just because I think he, he in a MMA style, the Russian style is a little bit, has the advantage just because I don't think there are many training partners, you know, most of these guys train in America and whatnot. And uh, I think Said also has the edge on the striking, despite spinning too much and not using much volume, you know. I still think that he has the edge on the feet, so in my calculation, Said should win this fight at least 60% of the time. So the odds are pretty much correct, you know. Said, parlaying Said is not a bad idea, you know, I'm not going to do it, but uh, don't blame me if you're going you're gonna to parlay. If you like Cody here, I would say definitely by decision, because... It's tough to finish Nurmagomedov. Cody is not a finisher on the feet. It's not gonna. He's not gonna submit Nurmagomedov either. You know. So Cody statement by decision as a as, as a heavy underdog. You know, not a bad idea as a bet by the way. You know. But uh, to me, there is a little bit more chance that Said gonna gonna dominate this fight. Michael Morales versus Trevin Giles. Very interesting one here. Michael Morales. This guy is only 21. He's super. You know, fast, athletic. Uh, tall, long for the division, you know, this guy is also, despite being 21, super calm in there, can do a little bit of everything, I haven't seen much flaws in his game, to be honest, of course, he's not in the UFC yet, he hasn't been tested and whatnot, but uh, this guy, to me, is coming for real, you know, being 21 and with that kind of composure, very impressive guy, Trevin Giles, guys, this guy's tough, you know, he's known for his... Uh, Basically, his toughness, he also can do a little bit of everything. He's dropping to welterweight, they're fighting the welterweight here. I saw some pictures, Trevin Giles looked great in there, you know, lean and strong. And uh, it's going to be an interesting fight, you know, and we're going to see whether Morales uh, has has the the hype, you know, the hype is just a fight. Trevin Giles definitely going to make him fight. Giles is tough to hit, you know, he has good straight shots, good, good jabs, you know, he can, again, do a little bit of everything. And uh, we'll see how what's gonna happen here. I have Morales as a small favorite, but there are so many questions coming to this fight that, uh, especially Morales debuting here with 21. Again, if you're gonna ask me, I would say this guy gonna fare well, even uh, even making his debut in a, such a young age. But uh, I don't know, man. I think Trevin Giles is a live dog in here. He's tough to hit. You know, Morales has more like a standard kickboxing approach where Giles is always bouncing and moving there and touching and mixing it up, you know, and uh, throwing a flurry. So you can see Giles definitely being able to score some shots in. But we'll see, guys. We'll see if uh, Morales is going to shoot and take this to the ground. We'll see how Giles is going to respond to that, especially in the welterweight where Giles is probably going to be a little bit stronger, you know. So tough one to, to pick, tough one to bet. I think... Yeah, I mean, I don't know. This, at these odds, it's very tough. You know, I think at these odds, I would still bet, bet Morales, but definitely pass here. If I go the distance, again, probably the best bet here because they're both tough. I don't think it's going to be a finish here, even though it's not impossible, okay? And, uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. This is the rest of the, the fights I have already covered in another video. And I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, please like, subscribe. Let's talk about the Patreon, how this can benefit you. Obviously, there's an example here of this video. Everything I talked about, the detailed breakdowns, the entire lineup, how I'm going to bet the lineup, plus the, the prop bets and the lock of the night discussion. So I hope you guys find this useful. It's only 10 bucks, so feel free to jump in. For 50, it's like I'm putting here, you have access to everything here. You have all the bets that I'm taking. I hit one column here because it's the amount that I'm betting on each guy. So 
whenever possible, guys, I try to combine the bets with the future cards. It's just uh, when I have time to basically to to go through it. At this point, I I'm, I got some extra time, so I'm doing it. So there are so many bets here that I'm taking. Just since you guys are here, I think you know John Castaneda was one of the best bets here, probably same level as Cyril Gunn, because uh, at plus 200, this guy to me should win at least 60% of the time in this fight, in the fight against uh, Miles Jones. So stick, uh, feel free to jump into the Patreon, both to see what I'm doing, you know, if you trust my analysis from previous time, plus to hear the breakdowns anticipated. This is a uh, part of the of the deal here. Okay. So guys, again, thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you next time. This time from Zrodermine Vet, bring the best, most consistent and transparent betting strategy for you.